Bom dia, boa tarde, boa noite, or whatever the case may be. My name is Marcus, and I am the host of the Black Brazil Today YouTube channel, as well as the BlackBrazilToday.com blog, where I analyze Brazil from the perspective of race. So an uh, interesting video that I'm going to do today, um, it's based on an interview with a uh, you know, pretty popular singer in Brazil. Her name is uh, Larissa Luz. Now, I've been familiar with Larissa Luz for a number of years, but interestingly, um, I've been more interested in some of her views on certain topics rather than just simply her music. She's an excellent singer. Um, I, even though I knew a few of her songs, I really became aware of her talent after I saw a musical. I think it was probably mid about 2017. So today I want to talk about some comments she made in a recent, uh, looks like a recent podcast. I don't know if I'm, I'm actually familiar with the name of the podcast, but <laughs> I was just curious about what she said. It's um. Her comments, you know, are dealing with the issue that I, I deal with a lot on this channel. And whenever somebody makes a comment about it, some OK, well, I need to revisit this because it's an ongoing discussion in Brazil. It's something that I've seen for a number of years. And, you know, coming from an American perspective where a lot of African-Americans have always valued black men, black women relationships. In Brazil, it was almost like the opposite. It was almost like, you know, black Brazilians were taught to prefer whiteness. Um, when I first started seeing this in the years that I started visiting Brazil, you know, uh, around 2000, 2001, 2002 and on, you know, to say something to question what, what I saw, people would paint me as a racist because I was from the United States. It's like, oh, you have to be a racist, you know, because, you know, here we are freely mixed. We've been mi mixing for centuries. So we don't have the racism that you have in the United States. But I always looked and I says, well, it's not that this is a point of racism. The point is, how can you complain about the situation of black Brazilians in the country if you all can't even have any type of unity between black men and black women? You know, both sides seem to have a fixation with getting a white or near white partner. So anyway, before I go further into this, I want to just ask you all to uh, like this video, share this video, subscribe to the channel, click on the notification bell so you'll know when I put up new videos. And in today's format, I'm, I'm going to just do a, a quick re, a quick preview or introduction. And then if you want to see my full commentary on it, I'm going to release a longer form video probably the next day after this one is released. So with that said, let's get into this video for today. Singer Larissa Luz asked the question, why do black men put black women in the friend zone? Hmm. Let's find out what she has to say about this. So this is the singer Larisa Luz. She's from Bahia. And this is uh, from a podcast that I saw a few days ago. So I said I wanted to definitely cover this. But first, let me just talk a little bit about who is Larisa Luz. She's a well-known singer-songwriter from Salvador, Bahia. Again, Salvador, Bahia, I always point out as the, uh, the center of black culture in the entire country everybody needs to visit Salvador Bahia at least once, right? If you're somebody who's interested in uh, the experiences of Black people in other countries, if you're going to go to Brazil, you know, Salvador might be the spot you're looking for. She got her start singing in various bands in Salvador, which, uh, known, which were known throughout the country and beyond as the country's center of Black culture. Um, in 2007, she became the lead singer of the popular band uh, Araketu, uh, this is a post that she held on to into 2012, and then she would later go solo. So this is what the band looked like with Larissa here while she was still in the group. Luz has released three CDs between the years 2012 and 2019 and has appeared in a handful of films. In 2016, Luz was nominated for a Latin Grammy Award for Best Contemporary Pop Album in the Portuguese Language for her album Territorio Conquistado. Even though I knew of Larissa Luz, I really didn't come to recognize her talent until I saw her in the musical Elza about the life and career of one of Brazil's most legendary singers, Elza Soares, this woman right here. I think Elza Soares might have died in, and I think it was 2021, maybe 2022, not sure. It was intriguing because um, she was named, Elza Soares was named the, the singer of the millennium by the BBC. And I was impressed with that because if you think about all the popular American singers that have been out, you know, since the 20th century began, they could have chosen any American singer to say to name them as the uh, you know singer of the millennium. But they chose Elsa Swad as a Brazilian woman, black Brazilian woman. Um, 
to put you in the mind, some, some, you know, people always use comparative, they compare people to other people to put you in the frame of what type of person or artist this is. And the BBC labeled her as the, uh, the Brazilian Tina Turner. Um, between like Tina Turner, Elsa Suarez, you had Celia Cruz in, uh, in Cuba. Um, it's interesting because I think Tina Turner died, I think last year, was it? So the person who Elsa Suarez was most compared to died like a year or two after she did. Okay. Elsa Suarez has a long discography. Um, she's somebody that you should probably know. She's a very popular, legendary singer in Brazil. So Lidiza Luz was one of seven black women who appeared in a musical, you know, about Elsa Suarez's life and career. So, as I said, various women represented different phases of Elsa's life in the musical. And although all of the women in that musical could hold their own as singers, for me, it was Larissa Luz that stole the show with her powerful voice. With Luz firmly on the radar after that, I got more interested in Luz due to her opinions on a number of topics. So first I wanted to. OK, this is uh, Larissa Luz when she appeared in the musical about Elsa Suarez. As I said, I think it was about 2017 that I, I was fortunate enough to, to see that musical because I was still living in Sao Paulo at the time. But as I'm saying, I'm intrigued more about Larissa Luz is very opinionated. I mean, her music is one thing, but then some people have music and they don't want anything connected to their personal life or their politics or anything. And Larissa Luz wears her politics on her sleeve. So some of the things I want to talk about in the long form video is where Larissa Luz talked about how black music is ours. What does she mean by that? I'll explore that. Amor Preto, uh, she had a video out a few years ago called No Tenha Medo de Mi. And in that video, she wanted to explore the possibility of black love. That's another, it was a good video. Um, she was breaking the mold because when I first started looking into Brazil in the early 2000s, I noticed that even in the music videos, if they had a black singer, they would usually have them paired up with a white romantic partner in the video. OK, so she wanted she wanted to say, hey, what's wrong with I'm more preto? You know, black love is what she was saying. She had out another video called Bonecas Pretas, which means black dolls. Uh, it's always been a scarcity of black dolls for black girls to play with in Brazil. So she, in this video, she became a doll for uh, little black girls have something to look up to. Right. Then four, basically what she's saying in the interview that I'm going to highlight here is saying, look, I don't want to be your friend. And she's talking about how black Brazilian men seem to pass over black women, and put them in the friend zone where while they per they pursue long term relationships with white women. This is the belief among many black women. So at this point, what I want to do is I want to overdub some comments that she made in a recent podcast. So this is Larissa Lu speaking. Why do black women have few relationships? Several times I've seen black men putting me in the friend zone. I'm my little sister, my little black sister. I'm dying to be able to do what? Kiss. Then when he comes with, oh, my little sister, my little sister, do what? I'm not a little sister. No, I want to kiss you. So, but this exists. Why do many black men see black women as little sisters? They don't see them as passive to receive affection. They don't see sexuality. These details, they need to be reflected on, I think. I think that sometimes we clear the agenda. When we simply say, oh, can you or can't you? I'm going to say, can you or can't you? Oh, you're with the white girl? Ah, but it's, it's not about that. So then why? Why is it happening? Why does it repeat itself? How are we going to reverse a scenario where there are hardly any black men who are since socially dating black women? How do we reflect this? How do we see this? How do we reverse this situation? I think it's important because otherwise we won't evolve. So that's what Larissa Luz had to say about this topic. You know, why? And she, this is what I'm saying. I talk about this a lot because this is a conversation that's going on in Brazil um, within the black community, specifically among black women, because black women are often the ones that are left to the side. You know, black women, black men are, are a lot of times are willing to have a little fun with them. They might lay with them, but then they don't want to be seen in public with them as, you know, in a long term relationships It's often said like, hey. You want to mess around with the black girls, that's cool. But when you want to settle down, have a family and raise your kids, a lot of black women are saying black men have this ideology that says, OK, you black girls are good for having fun with. But when I want to have a family, I want to be able to have a white girl. You know, people are talking about like the trophy wife 
Then there's the element of wanting to whiten their kids, you know, whiten their offspring, as we've talked about the process of what's called in Barranca Cemento, black Brazilians, black and brown Brazilians, choosing whiter skin partners with the hopes of producing lighter skin children. This is something that I've talked about often, you know, over and over because it's so central to the racial democracy myth in Brazil that says, since we're all mixing, how can we have any racism? Well, the racism lies in the fact that when people have the mixtures, okay, they do they tend to darken or they tend to lighten? That's that's the ultimate question. When when Brazilian elites set a goal back in the late 1800s and the early 1900s, the goal was we want to mix the black and brown population until they're gone, until everybody is white or something close to white. So this is this is a lot of things that uh, Larissa Luz talked about here. And I'm going to cover a little bit more of this in the long form video. So if you're happy with hearing just this section of the video, that's fine uh, for everybody who want to hear my breakdown on what she was talking about, you know, put more context in it. Stick around and come come to the, you know, stick around for the video. Um, come over to the other side and I'll explore this a little further. But if that's all you want to check out, that's fine. Uh, make sure you like this video, share this video, subscribe to the channel, uh, click on the notification bell so you'll see more videos when I put them up. And with that said, I'm going to end this video here, the preview of the video. Uh, I request that the West, rest of you come over to the other side for the long form and my breakdown.